Good evening. Hello, David. Let's see. Do we have Commissioner? I think I think we can get started and hopefully he'll join within a, a, a minute, few minutes. So uh, good evening, everyone. And um, I will bring the meeting of February 22, 2022 of the San Carlos Planning Commission to order. And we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. And if you would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America. Of America. And, and to the, and the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with, with liberty and, and justice for all. all. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Um, and for the record, Commissioner Garvey is absent this evening. Commissioner Iacopone? Present. And I don't see Don Bradley, so I'll mark him absent unless he happens to join in um, in a little bit. Uh, Vice Chair Clements. Present. And Chair Root. Present. Okay. And next, the next item on our agenda is the uh, public comment. And um, uh, this public comment section is limited to items that are not on the agenda and the commission the commission may briefly respond to statements made or questions posed as allowed by the brown act government code section 54954.2 however the commission's general policy is to refer items to staff for attention or have a matter placed on a future commission agenda for more comprehensive action or report so sarah are there anyone in the waiting room for the um, for the public comment there are none at this time. Okay, let's um, let's move on to the next agenda topic then, which is approval of minutes. And um, so we have minutes from January 12, 18, and February 7. Do we do we just handle them all as one group with a single um, motion to approve? Um, that would be fine with me, Chair. Yeah, and you can do that if you like. Okay. And uh, so are there any uh, comments um, on the minutes? None by me on any of the three of them. Okay. And, and uh, I see uh, Vice Chair Clements, do you have a comment? Chair, I just wanted to commend staff for the level of detail that is in the minutes. And I know it takes a lot of effort to get minutes looking this good. So I just wanted to acknowledge all the hard work and hours that went into these three sets of minutes. And with that, I would move approval of all three. Okay. And I, I could state the motion if we'd like. 
Either way. Um, is there a slide with the motion on it, or do we just go off of this one? You can just. Um, I'm happy to go off. Okay, so so I have a motion to approve the minutes. Um, I'll second it. Wonderful. We have a motion and a second. Can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Yacoponi. Yes. Vice Chair Clements. Yes. And Chair Root. Yes. They were good minutes. Thank you. I'll make sure to pass that on. I take the credit, <laughs> but I do look at them and read them before they're, they go into the packet. That, that's helpful, I'm sure, to have several passes. So the next item on our agenda is the public hearing. And um, um, the um, procedure for public hearing, the staff will present a report on the history, physical features, et cetera, on the application, followed with the staff's recommendations. The applicant will make a presentation. Thereafter, interested members of the community may speak on the proposal. When all interested parties have had an opportunity to be heard, the hearing will be closed and no further discussion from the floor can be held. The commission will then consider the evidence and make its recommendation. If you challenge a public hearing item in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described in this notice, the public notice or in written correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public hearing. Speakers should state their name prior to addressing the commission. This will assist staff in preparing the minutes. Our uh, item today is 611 Industrial Road, APN 046-090-370. Request for de design review and mitigated negative declaration for a new electronic billboard. Staff presentation. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Sanders Principal Planner, I'll be writing this staff presentation. Uh, so St. Carlos Municipal Code allows billboards on city property with design review from the Planning Commission and a lease agreement approved by the City Council. The project is located at the rear, is proposed to be located at the rear of 611 Industrial Road. That's adjacent to the US 101 southbound lanes. It's located within the heavy industrial zoning district and surrounded by commercial and industrial uses. The residence and hotel is located to the north and residential homes are located to the west. The proposed billboard um, is at a height of 55 feet above grade. The billboard itself would be a 48 by 14 foot display area. It's double sided in a V shape located 41 feet above gray to the underside of the display area. And then the pole is a decorative brushed aluminum pole cover with the um, City of Good Living logo on it. The site plan shows the proposed location of the site relative to the existing building in US Highway 101. The pole will be the only obstruction at the ground level as the billboard itself is located 41 feet above gray. So as you can see, the pole is located rather close to the um, rear of the building. And the tenant will have access to the area beneath the billboard for continued equipment storage or parking. The applicant has submitted visual simulations that show the existing conditions. Next slide. Thank you. That show the existing conditions on the left and the proposed billboard on the right. And this view is 200 feet away from the billboard when traveling northbound on US Highway 101. This also proposed visual simulation with the billboard located behind the commercial building approximately 600 feet east of Industrial Road. Visual simulation shows that the billboard will not be visible from Industrial Road and the adjacent residential neighborhood due to the blockage from the commercial building. The next slide shows the billboard as visible from the guest room at the residence in hotel, but not within direct line of sight. And this visual simulation is shown from a fourth floor guest room. The billboard has automatic display sensors for light levels to adjust at night and during darkened evening conditions. The billboard will be dark or completely shut off from midnight until 6 a.m. And the billboard does uh, is proposed to comply with the separation requirement of at least 1,000 feet from an ele another electronic message center. Billboard is also consistent with the regulations contained in the San Carlos Municipal Code as it complies with the height limit, with the um, area maximum oriented towards the freeway, 
and minimally visible from the residential neighborhood. An initial study mitigated negative declaration found no impacts from implementation of the proposed billboard that cannot be mitigated to less than significant level. Mitigation measures relating to air quality during construction to minimize dust and exhaust. Cultural resources, if any archeological or paleontological resources are found. And hazardous materials if contaminated soil or groundwater are found. We did receive one comment prior to this meeting. I believe it's been distributed um, to the planning commissioners and that was from the Belmont San Carlos Sierra group. The commenter expressed concern with the lighted billboard near a riparian corridor and requests the billboard be turned off from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. and that a full EIR be prepared. The um, mitigated negative declaration did evaluate the billboard and the proximity to the sensitive biological habitat. And that's um, outlined in biological resources section 4.4 found on pages 41 and 42. And that shows that the site is located in an industrial area, an area that is already well lit at night, and the nearest sensitive biological habitats are not close to the site. They're well over 1,500 feet away across the freeway. So this is not what a CEQA consultant considers as near a sensitive habitat. And there's no trees or landscaping on the site. So the um, CEQA consultant found that the double-sided billboard will not create a large illuminated zone that could be attractive to night flying birds. Colors on the billboard would not be predominantly red or white, which attracts birds. And the sign would not be illuminated during the hours of 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. It would also not have transparent or reflective surfaces, which could lead to bird collisions. Um, so based on that analysis, the project does not um, find that there would be a significant impact relating to biological resources. Um, a notice of the negative declaration was mailed to property owners and occupants within 300 feet of the site on January 12th for the 30-day public review period. No comments have been received on the mitigated negative declaration during the comment period, although as I just mentioned, we did receive one just before this meeting. Public comments on the hearing were mailed to all um, property owners and occupants on February 8th and published in the newspaper on February 10th. And relating to that notice, we did receive one comment from the San Mateo County Electrical Training Center located just adjacent to the site at 625 Industrial Road. They expressed concern that the location of the billboard could impact tenant equipment storage at 611 Industrial and cause additional overflow parking on 625 Industrial. Um, staff conducted a site inspection and also spoke with um, the applicant, and it does not appear that the support column would impact the adjacent tenant. The applicant um, was able to confirm that the location of the sports column would not displace parking, and we also have from um, uh, the managing um, of the agent of the property that it would not impact the tenant. Um, so here is the motion. Should you choose to um, approve the project, is both the negative declaration with the resolution and then the design review um, certificate for the billboard. And I'd be happy to try to answer any of your questions. Are there clarifying questions from the commissioners before we open for public comment? And I see uh, uh, Vice Chair Clements would like to go first. Thank you, Chair. And thank you, Lisa, for that very good presentation. Um, it did address oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, do we have Don Bradley? I see a phone number and a participant. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I'm on now. Can you okay. hear me? Thank yeah. you. Sorry for that interruption. Welcome. No, no, I'm glad that Commissioner Bradley's here. Welcome. Um, Thank you. Your co your comments did address a couple of the questions that I had. Could you talk again uh, a little bit more about the um, the riparian corridor and the habitat that is across Highway 101, but to the east side? And you said for the purposes of CEQA that um, that that 1,500 feet across the highway is far enough away that. It was not judged to be a CEQA impact. It is, did I have that correct? Or could you elaborate on that some more, please? Yeah, so um, based on the analysis in the CEQA document, and I also followed up with um, our CEQA consultant this afternoon to discuss it a little further. And then they did indicate that the billboard, um, for a few reasons, is far enough away from that corridor. They do not see that as um, kind of a, 
an area where the birds are migrating across the freeway. Um, it's already an industrial built up area that is already lit at night. Um, and it doesn't have habitat on it that also would attract the birds. So there's not a lot of trees adjacent to the billboard that would be an attractor for the for the birds or other, you know, um, natural, uh, like a creek or something else that would be a good habitat to attract the birds. So um, they also noted that the billboard does go dark at night. Um, so it would be shut off between midnight and 6 a.m. Great. Thank you. And I had a second question, if the chair doesn't mind, which was, um, which was just about the brightness of the billboard and, um, you know, light pollution to the night skies. And I, um, if you could be um, a little bit more specific or go into this a little bit more, I would appreciate it. What the, what the city's guidelines are for the limits of, uh, of light, of ambient light, and also the directional um, aspects to that and how this billboard proposal fits within that. Sure, so the city doesn't have any specific requirements for the lighting of the billboards, um, but there are um, highway codes that are required to be complied with. So that has to do with the brightness, of the foot candles and how frequently the message um, rotates. So to make sure there's no flashing images. And I'd like to have the applicant expand on that um, during their response to the comments. Um, but a couple of things, the billboard is kind of oriented in a V so that is not oriented towards the residential neighborhood of in the Western Hills, but it's more oriented, you know, specifically towards the freeway. Um, so it's specifically angled kind of away from that residential viewpoints. And then it does have a sensor. So if it's a dark kind of overcast day even, um, it would dim according to what, it, what that sensor perceives as the night of the sky brightness, and it would adjust accordingly. But I'd like to have the applicant expand as well during their comments. Thank you very much. Commissioner Iacopone. Thank you, Chair. Um, Lisa, could you just remind us about the notion of the city leasing the property and then subleasing it on for the installation? Maybe we've done that before, but I just don't remember. So why, why do we do that? Certainly. So our code does allow billboards on city owned property only or city controlled property only. So it does not currently allow billboards on private property. Um, so in order to even consider a billboard, it needs to be on city controlled property, either ownership or a lease agreement. Um, and so in this case, it would be via a lease agreement. So the Orion would lease the property from the applicant and excuse me, the, the city would lease the property and then would lease it back to Orion for operation of the billboard. Um, and then the city gets the revenue from the lease of that property. Um, we have approved four in the past um, at 817 American, 1119 Industrial. The city property is 800 Branston. And then one that has not been built yet at 171 Industrial. So three of the four have been on leased property, one on owned property. Very good. Um, and I'll, I guess I'll, uh, can wait, but Chair Roof, I do have a follow-up. And I can add that um, Adam Aronson, our economic development manager is also here this evening. If you have any further questions, it may be more appropriate for him to respond to those. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, I guess I have a, a more general question because I know a number of us have approved several of these in past. Um, we have four and I think you said we have three in, this would be the fifth approval. So in theory, we could have five within the 101 corridor. Um, what is like, what's our upper limit? How many more of these could we be seeing by code? Sure. Um, so I can have maybe Adam ask, respond to that one because I haven't analyzed. There does need to be that thousand foot separation, what other locations there could be. But I should also note there's one privately held billboard before this um, restriction went into place at One Circle Star Way. And that was the old billboard that was repurposed from when it was actually the Circle Star, Star Theater. Um, so there would be a total of six within the San Carlos corridor. And then Adam, so, if you could respond to how many more are of potential. So I, I can't speak to the, the thousand foot distance with regards to how many that then max out at with the number of billboards in the city. We don't have a specific limit on the number of digital billboards. 
but I, I can say that, you know, the council does feel that in their, their previous discussions that we're starting to reach the upper limit of what they feel is appropriate for the city. And I, I don't believe they would be open to very many beyond this. Um, very good. I'll, I'll save uh, follow-ups for um, when we have a commission discussion. Thank you. And um, Ruth. Yes, please, Commissioner Bradley. Um, yeah, excuse me for butting in like this, but uh, I want to further uh, uh, Vice Chair Clement's uh, comments on glare. And when someone mentioned the um, one, uh, Lisa, I believe, mentioned one down on the uh, north end of town uh, where the Circle Star Theater was, and that sign got... Uh, idolized or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I haven't noticed for a while now because I don't get out after dark going that way much. But uh, it was extremely bright and glaring and hazardous as uh, I believe this one will be because of the size of it and the height of it. Uh, it's uh, the size of a Average size apartment, 700, what is it, uh, 742 square feet. Think about that. And it's 55 feet in the air. So uh, what I'm really worried about is uh, for, for pilots wanting to land at San Carlos Airport. And we're putting up this uh, giant post with a flag on the end of it and lit up which is distracting to pilots as well as drivers and a safety hazard on the, uh, for the 101 freeway uh, driving. We all know that uh, signs are distracting. There's only two purposes that signs should have, informational and, and, and advertising. And we don't need the advertising. Is the city this poor? We have to keep getting these. Um, things that are derogatory to the, the city, I believe. And uh, well, let's let's save the let's save that call. part of the discussion for after the public comment. Yeah, um, that's kind of a, a deliberation a deliberation point, uh, an important one. Um, so definitely bring it up. But about the airport, does the city staff have a have a, a response about um, impact to the airport operation? Um, yeah, we haven't received any comments from the airport relating to this project or any of the other billboards that have, are operational. We have not received any concern or comments from them. Okay. I had a, a question or two myself, and um, one of them is, is there any, this billboard is branded with the city of San Carlos name and uh, has some responsibility for it. Is there any uh, restrictions or oversight of the content that could be on it? Can there be political advertising um, or perhaps a con you know, controversial content that um, we may not want to associate with the city? Adam, are you able, I believe there are, yeah. Yes, that's correct. So within the sublease agreement, there is language where if there's any any signage or advertisements on the sign that is believed to be sensitive, it needs to be shared with the city first, and then the city has a chance to either approve or deny what that particular messaging is if it is believed to not reflect the city in a manner that we would wish it to. Okay, thank you. And how long is the city committed to um, maintaining the, uh, the the billboard is, is the lease. Um, are we are we stuck with it for a certain amount of time once we sign off on the lease? So it's a twenty year lease with then a ten year option, and that option is at the terms of the lessee. Mm -hmm. So essentially, up to thirty years. Okay, it's an option for the lessee. So. That's correct. And that is that is the terms that is on the other billboards that are, have previously been approved in mm -hmm. terms of time. Okay. The other LED billboards, do they also have the restriction of midnight to 6 a.m. dark? 
They do. I, uh, I'm not sure about the Circle Star billboard since that one preceded the city's involvement with these, but the other billboards do have that same restriction. Okay. Well, the Circle Star billboard is that a San Carlos billboard or Red, Redwood City? It was. It's within the city of San Carlos city limits, it's but it's somewhere. privately held and maintained. I see. Okay. Those are my questions. Um, let me, so we can take a second pass here. Commissioner, Vice Chair Clements. Thanks, Chair. I just, I had a simple question. I had two questions. Um, one is about the lease agreement, which I realize is not before us this evening, but I, I wanted just to ask Adam if the city has guidelines as to um, conditions or parameters under which that it, it would enter into lease agreements for billboards. How would the city decide if somebody came to us and said, hey, would you like to do this with us? So historically, we don't have specific parameters on what the lease terms would be, but we wouldn't consider something that doesn't meet at the bare minimum what we've received from previous billboards. And we're at the point now where we have enough in the city that we're not really willing to consider it any unless they go beyond the previous terms that have been offered to the city. Great. And um, can I ask a technical question then as we, mm -hmm. maybe this is a Lisa question, um, as we're considering the environmental impacts of uh, the action is around the EIR neg deck and the environmental analysis, um, can we make a recommendation to the city council as well regarding the lease or is the lease not agendized tonight so we cannot do that? Um, the lease is not under your authority, but um, depending on what the comment is, I'm sure we could carry it forward. Okay, thanks. So we'll handle during comments, then that makes sense. And then one just logistics question. There's an airport land use committee, correct? Yes. So, but the ALEC doesn't have to sign off on billboards. Is that correct? That's my understanding, correct. Okay, thank you. Any other clarifying questions before we move to the uh... Well, are we going to have the, the uh, applicant present? The or, applicant um, is here this evening and would be happy to answer any questions. Is that part of the of the uh, public comment or is that part of the um, presentation? Uh, you could open the public comment period and have the applicant go first. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't see any other hands raised, so let's uh, move to the public comment. If you would like to make Mine, a public comment. Mine's up, but you can't see it. That's right. So go ahead, Commissioner Bradley. Sorry. I, I, I just, one clarification. It seems to me the last one of these uh, that we approved after uh, a lot of controversy, we told the building owner that uh, sign that he was going to put up. Now, it wasn't one of these big LED signs, 50 feet in the air either but it was just built a sign attached to a one-story building as this one is, but this other one didn't, didn't go up in the air. It was truly one story and not that much lighting. I remember, but I remember us telling him that the only thing he could put on the sign was the occupants of the building that he owned uh, on the same property. And he didn't like that, but that's what we told him. And now uh, this one is going to be put up and uh, every eight seconds it change and have uh, anything except objectionable um, information on it. Uh, did we change our policy or is it just that the city owns or rather leases the property and therefore it gets around that requirement so that the sign can do a lot of advertising not just informational which was the case of the prior one i have some clarification on that please sure so i can clarify it so i believe um the billboard that commissioner bradley is referring to is located at 171 industrial road there's a static billboard there now um, the adjacent property owner and business owner had a um, advertising message that was also static attached to the supports of that billboard, so beneath it. 
when the Planning Commission and City Council approved the lease agreement for the new electronic billboard, it prohibited the ability to attach any other messages to that electronic billboard relating to the business. So then the property owner came back and had a separate sign that they, he wanted to propose adjacent to it. And the restriction was put on that separate sign that it could only advertise the adjacent business. And Commissioner Bradley is correct, the property owner was not pleased with that determination. Um, that business has since turned over and is now being run by Lyft Collision Center. And so the advertisement that you see out there just simply says Lyft. And so it is in compliance with the city regulations as a separate sign advertising the business. Thank you very much. Okay, let's move to the uh, public comment section. And if you would like to make a public comment on agenda item 6A for 611 Industrial Road, now is the time to speak. You may join the Zoom meeting at the link provided or call the phone number provided and enter the ID and virtually raise your hand. Um, or if you're on the phone, press star nine and then star six to unmute. And we'll start off with the, uh, with the applicant. Welcome, please uh, introduce yourself. I'm Charles Beck, I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Orion Outdoor Media. I'm here to answer all your questions regarding the development, the, the, uh, the construction, the lighting, of course, the, um, the pole placement, photo simulations, anything regarding the operations or construction of the sign. Um, our CEO is also on the line tonight if he did have any, any of the uh, contractual or, or monetary questions, he, he would be happy to answer that as well. Um, I would like to address the uh, lighting comments um, to kind of, uh, if somebody, is there a possibility somebody could pull up page 169 of the, no? Okay, so on page 169 of the um, agenda packet, there is a photo simulation of the sign that's existing at Branston Road. And it's a photo simulation I took at nighttime from industrial. And you can see there's clearly zero light uh, spillover or, or shed. You can't even, in the photo simulation, you can't even tell the sign's on. And I'm standing 100 feet away from it. Um, so the, the new technology on these signs, this sign is going to be an exact replica of the last two that were built in the city. They're going to look, we're using the same manufacturer, we're using the same pole cover manufacturer, same screen manufacturer. So it's going to look exactly like the one that's at Branston. It'll be a cookie cutter of that sign. Um, now the technology on the screens has got a little bit better, but um, as, far as, as far as what we are constructing, it's going to be no different than any other sign that's already been approved by the city council. And it's already in, in a a developed industrial zone, um, you know, across from the airport. Um, and the lighting complies with all state standards. And um, again, if you look at that photo simulation, I think it kind of speaks for itself. It's a, um, the spillover on these signs now is almost zero. They're, they almost appear backlit, not, you know, they're not projecting light per se, so, um, and they are oriented towards the freeway. I think there's another photo simulation that shows the orientation of the V, so where the, any visibility, even if you were standing right behind the sign, you couldn't see the faces because the way they're, so if you're behind the sign, they're angled like this, so you don't see the, uh, you don't see the faces even if you're standing right up close to the sign. So um, I think, you know, they're, they're made to be projected towards the viewers on Highway 101 and not anybody else. So with that, if there's any other questions other than the lighting, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you for that. And I, I think that helps clarify the concern that was raised. Um, and... Let's see if we have anyone else uh, that would like to make a public comment. Sarah, is there anyone in the waiting room? 
Yes, um, caller ending in 403, you are unmuted and you have two minutes to speak. Hello, welcome. We don't hear you yet. You might have to push star six if you're on the phone. Well, um, that's not working. So, um, hello. Oh, now we hear you. Hello. Hi, welcome. Hello, this is Dr. Victoria. Can you hear me? Now we hear you. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm a resident of uh, San Carlos for the past 50 years. Uh, we have been in the riparian area as well as the Nob Hill area in which uh, thousands of birds uh, fly over your proposed sign. The, the birds can, of course, see it. Uh, and uh, during the migratory period, which is exactly the time when the hours are very short uh, of sunlight, and then, of course, your sign will now be attracting and distracting these birds. So the Sierra Club is very concerned about the location of this sign, uh, which will lead to bird strikes, uh, confusion amongst the birds, and it's uh, from the standpoint of birds, that uh, insect is a ecological disaster. And uh, the, the Sierra Club and we personally are very opposed to it. Uh, we visit uh, these sites on a daily basis. And uh, currently, if you happen to go down there during the night hours and just before sunset, when your light's going to come on, uh, you will see thousands of birds on the Nob Hill pond area and in the riparian area as well. So we're certainly opposed to this uh, lighted sign from an environmental perspective, and we don't really see that an appropriate study has been undertaken to address that issue. Thank you. Sarah, is there an additional caller? There are no callers at this time. Okay. I'm waiting my 10 or 15 seconds to see if any anybody pops up before we close the public comment. Well, since, since there are no additional uh, public comments, I would entertain a motion to close the comment. Public comment period. Um, so moved. I move that we close the public comment period on item 6A for 611 Industrial Road. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Iacopone? Yes. Commissioner Bradley? Yes. Vice Chair Clements? Yes. And Chair Ruth? Yes. Okay, now we have an opportunity to um, discuss. Um, can we can we have the uh, the motion on the screen so we know what we're the scope of what we're asked to approve? Thank you. And so, um, before we start the discussion, I just point out that we're um, approving the proposed mitigated negative declaration. Uh, and so, as was, um, I think, mentioned earlier, um, we're not weighing in on the contract terms um, here as a planning commission, but um, um, but instead we're uh, addressing the things that are listed in this motion. So, uh, to start the um, deliberations off, um, Vice Chair Clements, uh, I see your hand is raised. Thank you, Chair. I had a question. Another question for staff that just occurred to me, I apologize, I didn't think of it before. If you don't mind if I ask, um, this is a mitigated neg deck and the, um, the caller suggested that this study was not sufficient. And I think the CR club's comment was that a full EIR um, would be more appropriate for this 
project. Um, but we also heard from staff that the CEQA analysis was already applied um, in the um, in the analysis that was done. And so I guess I wanted to ask staff if if a more full study was done, um, would anything change about the analysis or have the standards for the CEQA review already been accomplished and that that part um, really would not change much? Um, so thank you for the question. In order to determine what level of you know, CEQA review is appropriate, um, the CEQA consultant goes through the initial study checklist first. And I know the Planning Commission has seen that before. And they go through and kind of review the project in relation to those different checklist items to see, is there any item that could have a potential for a significant impact with without any mitigation measures? And that's kind of what triggers, right, where we get to then do an EIR and we need further analysis. So with this project, the consultant went through that checklist, um, took a look at where those biological resources are in relation to this project, the habitat on the site, and did not find that there was the need to do any additional analysis. Um, in speaking with the CEQA consultant this afternoon, they've also noted that um, the Sierra Club has not presented substantial evidence that there would be an impact and that it should be um, analyzed. I know they provided some information about a separate project, um, but that is at a different location than this site. Um, as, you're lo as you're very familiar with San Carlos, 611 Industrial has got the freeway, and then across from the freeway are other businesses, um, Hiller Aviation Museum, the 655 um, Skyway construction is going on right now for that new office and hangar development, and then beyond that is the airport. So this isn't even directly across from that Bear Island Preserve, that's much farther south. Um, and so for all of those reasons, the consultant determined that the EI, a full EIR was not needed for the additional analysis. That was very helpful, Lisa. Thank you very much. Um, with that, Cher, I guess I would make the suggestion, well, I, my observations are that the rules that apply seem to have been followed. The height limit is, in, is present. It sounds like the billboard has, um, with the adjustment for darkness uh, during the nighttime from 12 to 6, but then also the number of foot candles. Um, following a standard um, for the industry and presumably for Highway 101. It, um, to me, it seems that the objective standards that have been set out have been met um, by the applicant. And I do appreciate all of the additional um, photos and um, simulations of what the lighting might look like and where the billboard would fall. Um, so while it does project on, you know, in, in one uh, image that I wasn't too excited about, there are lots of other images that indicated that it's from the residential neighborhood that it wouldn't be seen. And for, um, you know, from other vantage points of the hotel, it also would not be visible, nor would it be visible to the hotel guests, the residents in. So, um, I'm left with thinking that the um, proper procedures for the objective criteria would be to uh, recommend that we approve the mitigated neck deck. And, um, but I, I will comment that it does seem in the comment section, uh, while the lease is not under discussion today, it does seem as if the city needs to develop a standard and a protocol or a policy around which it would consider um, additional billboards and the conditions under which that may not just address revenues, but in, one, in what conditions would the city enter into a lease agreement in order to make the findings that only billboards can only be done on city controlled land. Um, I, I find that the willingness to enter into new leases in order to make that policy um, work was unexpected to me. I, I assumed it would only be applied to city already owned or already controlled land. 
just hearing about the standard. So um, I do think that that's a, something the city council needs to explore and put in place because if objective standards are met, um, you know, we, we need to have rules by which we consider projects like this. So, um, so those are my comments. Thank you, Chair. Thank well, you. I would agree with her comments. Uh, I thought I earlier heard someone from staff say that this should be the last uh, application for these um, that we wouldn't have anymore. Is that is that possible? I, I don't expect a commitment here now, but I think it's reasonable to consider that we have we have enough of them. Uh, they're a safety hazard for drivers and car accidents on a already busy road that's now got a toll road on it as well as uh, 10 lanes wide uh, of pavement. Uh, I'm not so sure about the habitat and the birds. I don't want to confuse the birds. But if that's a problem as well as the drainage my big consideration is hard to measure. It's subjective, but it's aesthetics. I don't want to be known as the city of bad signs, that we have more signs than Belmont or even Redwood City. It's just I, I serve on this planning commission because I want to keep, not that I'm anti-growth at all, no, far from that. But uh, I, I want to keep our city uh, pleasing for people to live here and making more of the signs that are on uh, lit up for 18 hours a day. That would mean some people would would never see that sign off because they'd be in bed before and after. Uh, it, it's just very distasteful to me. And uh, I'm sorry I don't go off often like this on projects, but this is one I feel strongly about that it's a safety hazard and a very negative aesthetic approach. I will say that the, I think the, the uh, developers of this have done good job with the other projects, just the nature of it that bothers me. And the consultants that we had that, that did the uh, to have uh, did an excellent job too. I want to commend them as well as our staff, Lisa and everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bradley. Uh, next, Commissioner Iacopone. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I'd like to uh, just make two points. Well, one is I want to echo and support the comments of both of my colleagues. Um, and I distinctly remember one of the prior approvals for one of these that uh, Commissioner um, Bradley and I had um, a good discussion and agreeing with each other that we, we were both feeling exactly as he said, the city really doesn't need more of these um, and I think it was a great comment earlier, do we actually really need the revenue? Is, is it that material? Um, so I think point one is um, if we, because all of the requirements have been met, need to approve this because there isn't a basis to not approve it. And I don't know if that's true, but if that's the case, and I, I would like to have um, sentiment be clear to the city council that the planning commission does not want to support any more of these. And we actually don't want staff to be put in a position to have to negotiate leases for more of these and do all of this work to get to this point. Um, and I think the second point is um, it's, it's not clear whether there is basis to not approve the mitigated negative declaration in that the, the we went through the checklist, 
the areas that were questionable were addressed. The applicant has was asked to go through a process with good faith. They have done so. Um, and any of the concerns appear to have been addressed other than this general point of aesthetics and do we want this in our city? So um, I guess that's, it's really just saying, if I felt like there was a basis to vote no, um, I would. I don't actually see that there is. Um, and if staff has a comment that says, well, on this basis, you could vote no, I'd like to know what that is. Well, there, there may be some basis for that in terms of the um, impact on the um, environment, uh, on the aesthetic environment. It, it, can we see the, um, to, just to be thorough here, can, can we see the, what the, um, um, the terms are that um, we have to agree we're meeting? to um, approve this? Yeah, so we do have two separate actions. One is yep. the adequacy of the mitigated negative declarations of the environmental review. And then the second is the design review certificate. And those findings are outlined in the zoning code. Um, so if the city attorney were here, he would point you in that direction as to review the findings as listed in the um, staff report. And I don't know if Lisa's able to pull those up, but I can read them to you. The proposal is consistent with the general plan and the zoning code. The design of the proposal is appropriate to the city, the neighborhood, and the lot in which it is proposed. The design of the proposal is compatible with its environment with respect to use, forms, materials, colors, setback, location, height, design, or similar qualities. The proposed satisfies the rules stated in Chapter 18.22. Billboard is consistent with the California Outdoor Advertising Act and the Federal Highway Beautification Act. The billboard must be oriented primarily for viewing from the adjacent freeway. The billboard design and orientation takes into account visibility from surrounding residential neighborhoods. Um, so some of those findings, right, are pretty specific. Um, and it gets the most one that is a little more objective would be the design is compatible with its environment, uh, is appropriate, the, the design is appropriate to the city and the neighborhood and the lot in which it's proposed, so findings two and three, or maybe a little more um, for the commission to weigh in on. Thank Lisa, you. I don't know if you have any other thoughts. Um, would you like me to pull these up? I could stop share and kind of bring up the section of the code. But these, um, the, these findings that Lisa just read are found on packet pages 19, 20, and 21. So it starts at the bottom of packet page 19. But specifically, the findings um, 2 and 3 are found on packet page 20. And if it's helpful to the commission, I can certainly bring those up. But otherwise, they're in the packet. So I guess I'll follow on with Commissioner Iacopone's comments that there, I think there would be room for us to consider the, especially the um, the appropriate to the city and the neighborhood um, as, as we get lots of billboards, uh, the city starts to look like the Las Vegas Strip that may not be appropriate for our city or neighborhood. So it seems like uh, there could be at, at some point we could get to the place where we would um, have a basis to, um, in my opinion, we'd have a basis to, to um, say that we're not, uh, the proposal doesn't meet uh, that standard. But uh, I'm not sure that this, in my opinion, the billboard, the new ones, are not so terrible in that the lighting seems to be attenuated. Um, the, the billboard that's um, near Circle Star Road 
seems onerous and especially bright, but the other billboards along 101 seem to be, uh, which are newer, um, seem to be better. I, I wish somebody would perhaps measure that uh, Circle Star billboard and see if it really uh, meets it, the standards or not, but that's not what we're here to discuss tonight. But the, the other ones seem to be um, uh, quite a bit um, less um, flashy and, and bright. Um, and um, so my, I'm trying to weigh, I don't view it as a positive thing, but, um, but I, I understand that the city council uh, would like to um, install this, that it's a, you know, it is a significant revenue generator. And um, so I'm kind of falling on the, um, on this side of it. Um, doesn't quite reach the point where um, where I I would complain I would vote no due to the um, um, environmental um, impact on the neighborhood um, point. It would be nice if we could attach a little note to the city council that um, that uh, it's just as general feedback that um, I, I agree with other commissioners um, who have stated this that um, that it seems like we've definitely reached the limit. Oh, and I wanted to mentioned in the chat from the meeting, I think it's okay if I if I relay um, the chat message from Charles Beck, um, and it, it says due to the state spacing requirements and zoning requirements, there are not really any more spots to put an additional sign in the future due to the regulations. So um, I guess they probably um, have looked to see what opportunities there are, and uh, and and this is the last opportunity according to them. So should we take another pass of comments before we um, consider the motion? I, I, I think so. It looks like uh, Vice, Vice Chair Clements and then Commissioner Iacopone. And Commissioner Bradley, you can just speak up since I don't see your hand uh, in between. I'll follow comments. those. I'll follow my, co my colleagues. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. I'm looking carefully at the, at the basis for the findings. I do think that because it is located in what is already an industrial area and it's continue, it's slated to continue to be the industrial area, and because it is opposite um, three business uses, as staff noted, Hillary Aviation, new office building, and the airport, that I I would have a hard time it um, I would have a hard time not finding that the proposal is compatible with its environment um, and is appropriate to the lot in which it is proposed. I find that actually the, the base of it and the city's logo to be attractive. And I did actually find the all of the um, simulations as to the height of the billboard not being visible from many different vantage points or onerous. Um, to be compelling. Also, the one on page 169 that the applicant pointed out, that billboard looks like it's off to me. And so if the technology is such that it is not the glaring, horrible sign that, for instance, IKEA has in East Palo Alto, which is just overwhelming to me, um, if it is a different technology and it is not... <laughs> It is not actually even visible from, you know, a few hundred feet away. And so if you're not at the right angle, to me, that is much less onerous and concerning than some other ones that already exist on the highway. So looking through this, um, it, is it appropriate to the neighborhood? It's not visible from the, from the residential neighborhood. And is it appropriate for the city? Well, the city weighed in on the design guidelines and the logo usage and um, you know, I don't find it unattractive as billboards go. I just don't love billboards. I also understand that they are quite lucrative. Um, and as long as there is a lease termination and the lease itself, the city council decides is worth it, um, you know, it's a different topic. So I'm having a hard time making findings that would allow us to do something different than approve. Thanks. Mr. Iacopone. Thank you, Chair. Um, maybe just a follow-up for staff, and maybe Aaron, you could you could weigh in. Um, compared to the 
previous approval that we had for um, a, a billboard such as this. Um, is, is there any material difference in, in height, in square footage, um, in the V orientation? Uh, I don't think there is in the, in the column because I think that's also silver with San Carlos on it. So can, can you just share whether this is you know, identical or largely identical, or is there a difference from the one previously approved? This one should be exactly the same as the last one approved. I believe they're even using the same manufacturers. Um, so it should look as almost an identical duplicate of the other signs that have recently been built. Okay, and can you say, remind us when, like was that 24 months ago or when was that? Um, I believe the last one that was built was built about three years ago. So I think to the applicant's point, technology has moved on. And I, I think, I, you know, my, my points earlier, notwithstanding, I'm with uh, Vice Chair Clements that, again, we've, there is a standard, it's an objective standard. Um, I don't have to say I'm happy about it for the citizens of the city from um, an aesthetic point of view, but um, it meets a standard that was good and hasn't changed. And therefore I, I find it difficult to find any reason to vote what my um, conscious says otherwise or my design sense says otherwise. So uh, that was my comment, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bradley. Uh, yes, just lastly, I'd like to say I'll, I'll, uh, I cannot support this. Um, sure, I can make most of the findings that that the staff has done and the consultant, uh, good jobs on both their part and the developer too, but I just think enough is enough. I say that every time and yet, uh, I guess I've been here now about six years and gone through several of these durations uh, on LED sign boards for San Carlos and uh, I'm opposed to them because they're a safety hazard mainly. Um, not as much aesthetically, but uh, the safety factor. Uh, they are distracting when you're driving day or night and changing every eight seconds. I mean, are we that poor? We have to prostitute ourselves to, to get projects like this. Why not? I, I think that if you went up 55 feet in the air, that most of the people res staying in the residence inn of uh, Marriott Hotel uh, would would be able to see this. I don't know if they said that or not, but uh, you couldn't see it if you were on the ground floor or at the swimming pool of that hotel. But if you were in the second to third, fourth, fifth floor of it, you could. I'm I'm quite sure. And um, they're, but they're not driving. They're just looking out their window, looking at an, another ugly electrical sign. Um, so I can't support this. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I guess I'll take my turn here and um, agree with Commissioner Iacoponi and Vice Chair Clements that um, I don't see that, um, I think the findings, we could, findings are met. Uh, with regard to the um, compatible with its environment um, in the neighborhood, um, given the setting of it, even though I don't think it's particularly attractive to have it, but um, um, I don't think it um, it conflicts with it, with that. And uh, I trust that the highway uh, 
uh, rules for uh, for billboards and the airport rules and stuff are all consistent with the uh, with the erection of the sign. After all, this is not the first one of these along there, so um, um, there shouldn't be surprises as to um, as to their um, impact. And so, um, so I would um, I would say that um, I um, would would vote yes for this, um, even though it's. Um, Aesthetically, um, not very pleasing to have. That chair, I, I could make a motion if you'd like. Okay, go ahead, please. I move that the Planning Commission adopt the accompanying, accompanying resolution for approval of the proposed mitigated negative declaration associated with the proposed installation of a new LED billboard at 611 Industrial Road based on the findings and for the reasons incorporated in the prepared initial study slash mitigated negative declaration and the staff report. I also move that the planning commission approve the design review associated with the proposed installation of a new LED billboard at 611 Industrial Road based on the findings and for the reasons incorporated in the staff report and as conditioned in the design review certificate. Thank you. I would second the motion if we can um, vote them separately. There are two motions there. Can we separate them? I'd and like to support by yes. Chair Clement. Yes, absolutely. We, uh, yes, I, I agree to bifurcate. Yes. So, uh, so we've got two motions on the table. Can I have a, a second, perhaps, for the, a second to the first motion? And then we yes. can take a roll call, and then we can, um, and then we can second the second motion. So uh, I think I heard you, uh, Commissioner Bradley, second the first motion. Um, can we have a roll call on the first motion, please? Commissioner Iacoponi? Yes. Commissioner Bradley? No. Vice Chair Clements? Yes. And Chair Root? Yes. Thank you. We have a, a second motion has been made. Um, do, I would entertain a second to that motion. I will second. Could we first consider uh, earlier Vice Chair Clements um, uh, fostered the idea of doing a more detailed uh, EIR? So, um, are you suggesting? That um, that we, we attach a, a condition, motion, a condition, with, or hmm? yes, yes, a condition. Um, point of order: Would the full EIR not pertain instead to the first motion rather than the second? Yeah, I'm afraid mm -hmm. so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't think you'd notice. <laughs> <laughs> You're very sharp. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm um, um, so the design review. Um, I, I believe I'm satisfied that the um, specifications um, meet the um, meet the design re re rules. So um, so I guess I I don't see a place to put that in I'm, I'm myself, Commissioner Bradley. Um, so I guess we're left with the motion. Um, if we have a second, then um, unless there's an additional comment before so before we have a second. I believe Commissioner Iacoponi seconded and then we can I discuss did. if oh, you did. that motion okay. does have a- Okay, I did not hear that. So um, we have a motion and a second. So a second. Um, thank you. Let's have a roll call on the second motion. Chair Roof, I'm sorry, before a roll call, do you mind if I ask, does anyone else have anything to say about the design review before we vote? Commissioner Iacoponi or Bradley? Uh, I'm sec I uh, support uh, Chair's comments about the design. Uh, I will just say uh, this is one of those hard decisions for me. Um, and I I just had to uh, go with my values mostly on it. But I, uh, I 
appreciate where everybody's coming from on this. Okay. Well, we do have a motion and a second. So um, is there any discussion before we have the roll call? Let's have a roll I call. I'd just please. like oh. us to uh, attach to our motion or you know, to the motion that we forward to the city council that we think this should be the last sign on 101. Staff, is there a way to um, is there a way to um, to communicate that? Um, we do provide the minutes, and we can capture the discussion um, at this point. Um, there could be, if you want to have consensus, maybe from the commission expressing concern. I don't know if I heard from all commissioners that this is the last one, so I don't want to misstate anything. Um, mm -hmm. So if you just want to kind of have a straw vote or just say, do all commissioners agree that we want to forward the statement and then separately vote on the motion? Um, Lisa, of course, unless you have other ideas. And Lisa, I just wanted to clarify, this could be a statement that would be uh, contained in the staff report that goes to council, correct? That's correct, yes. Yeah, that's what I would think it would probably be the best way to reflect um, any um, sentiments from the commission. Um, to the council. Okay. Well, I would support a statement in the staff report um, that this be the last um, commercial uh, type billboard. I mean, I understand buildings along the highway can have a sign designating the, the name of the business, but and that's probably a different category. But for these big commercial buildings, uh, I don't know what the terminology is there, but for the uh, for this um, for this category, um, I would um, I support that this be the last one. So now we've got Commissioner Bradley and me. I would agree up to that. support that as well. Uh, I would also agree with that. And I would suggest, you know, my earlier comments that the city council um, consider a framework that continues to effectuate that. And, you know, the city council's framework could also address under what conditions leases would get re-entered into. The billboard is not going to be gone after 30 years. There just won't be a lease anymore for it. And so really the question is, um, what is the council's approach to, you know, what they would like to see with billboards or lack thereof? So I, I encourage that to be part of the broader discussion for lease renewals or for business terms um, that would affect the operations of the billboard. Thanks. That makes sense to me as well. Um, it's a little broader statement than um, than what um, Commissioner Bradley brought forward and I endorsed. So do we want to take? And I concurred Bradley? with as well. I think it's yeah. additive, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just an additional an additional um, consideration to be included. I would I would support that. Um, any. Oh, I will do. Okay. We probably should say consensus because uh, one of our commissioners is, uh, Ellen's not on tonight, I don't think. Yeah, we can clarify that at the um, in the staff report that based on the um, attendees at the hearing, there was consensus, yes. That would be perfect. Okay, that, thank you, Commissioner Bradley, for um, for leading us in that direction to make that explicit to the city council. We've got to hear from, sure. well, from the people sure. of the city somehow. So um, we made it happen there. So we do have the um, the motion and the second um, on the table. Are we ready for the, uh, the roll call? Yes. Commissioner Iacopone? Yes. Commissioner Bradley? Yes. Vice Chair Clements? Yes. And Chair Ruth. Yes. Okay. The next item on the agenda is um, item seven, reports, correspondence, and general information. Starting with letter A, report on recent city council actions. 
Uh, yes, Chair Ruth, and for the benefit of anyone watching and for the for the uh, commission here this evening, I went ahead and added my verbal report as a um, as a bullet under this item, item A, and that is to say that um, recently, um, this past um, Monday, almost a week ago, the City Council did agree to extend the urgency ordinance that was initially uh, passed in January, um, applicable to SB9. Um, for those two, a maximum of two lots for a, a subdivided parcel in single family residential zoning areas. And this extension um, would last for a period of 10 months and 15 days. And the city uh, will be embarking or staff will be embarking on a process to work with the community to address some of the big policy questions um, related to SB9. So more information on that will be coming but um, just wanted to share with the commission that this, um, the urgency ordinance was extended on February 14th. And may I ask, do, do you know what forum the, uh, this would next to be discussed in? Or would it be a study session or community? How, would, how will input on this be gathered? Yeah, I, we can do a report to the commission at our next meeting to kind of provide an outline uh, or provide a memo to the commission on the steps um, that we'll be taking um, to have that discussion with the community. But I believe one of the very first steps is to uh, work with the community. And we are going to be looking at whether that would be a standalone meeting or perhaps a study session where we would use the planning commission as a platform for that. But I don't have all the specifics yet. We're still looking at that. And I have to meet um, with uh, the key staff that is working on that. So I don't want to misspeak and yeah. Right until I get that information, but that's certainly something we can bring back to the commission and share. Thank you, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, are we ready to go to to be planning commission comments or reports? Any comments or reports from the planning commission? I see vice vice chair comments. Thank you, chair. Um, I just wanted to report out that. A part of the planning collaborative for the um, cities in Santa Clara County working on the housing element. And I did want to note that at least some jurisdictions in the Bay Area due to the implementation of AB 215, which requires an additional round of comment and public review for the draft housing element um, is the, the jurisdictions are finding it challenging to um, to meet the state's deadline for submission of the housing element. And um, I guess I wanted to ask, I don't know if staff's allowed to comment during this section, but if any jurisdictions in San Mateo County are reporting the same difficulty. Uh, I can share that at this time, I'm not aware of anyone um, uh, um, having that particular issue in San Mateo County. I mean, it could very well be but it's one of uh, one thing that our consultants are very aware of, especially as they're going through the process, have already gone through the process in Southern California with some of their clients um, down in Southern California. So um, we'll probably be needing to kind of strategize through that process as well. But you are correct. There's the additional process where um, we need to get um, like a, an additional review of the housing element um, during the state's review process. So it makes it a little bit challenging to do that, but we are aware <laughs> and <laughs> we're gonna try and do our best to, to get through that, so. Great, that's good to hear. Um, I did wanna just clarify that the additional review process adds a, a total of 70 days or takes it away really um, from, uh, from the timeline up front. And so it is It is not insignificant. And I also wanted to report that in a conversation with senior um, state staff, that they also strongly recommend an additional review cycle after the first submission to them and before the final submission, which adds another 60 days of review uh, of time to the timeline, which, uh, where I work did not anticipate that either, given how lengthy the first comment letters are being that the state is issuing for many jurisdictions. So I just wanted to report that out as well. 
it is not pretty out there trying to make these housing element deadlines. So uh, that's my report. Thank you. Any other planning commission comments or reports? Let's move on Happy to Steve. Washington's oh. birthday. <laughs> oh, is that, is that today? Yes, it is. Yesterday was President's Day. Yeah. Today is Washington's birthday. Okay. It used to be a own holiday until yeah. it got consolidated. I'm old enough to remember that we got two two holidays a yeah. year due to Lincoln and, and That's Washington. Right. That's right. Thank you for that report, um, informal report. Uh, any other comments or reports before we move on? Let's see if there's any correspondence. Uh, yes, through the chair, um, the comments, the correspondence that staff received um, today um, regarding the agenda item 6A, 611 Industrial has been forwarded to the commission. It will be part of the record. Thank you. That's why I, I didn't see those. Part D, planning staff comments, reports, and updates of current projects. Uh, yes, so I have a couple of things that I would like to uh, share with the commission, and I'll follow up in an email um, so that the commission doesn't have to write all this down. But for our next um, regular scheduled meeting, which is on March 7th, um, we will have an item before the commission, and it has to do with um, a proposed amendment to a previously approved sign program for the transit village project. So this is gonna, this, the amendments are concerning the two commercial buildings that frame the historic depot at the Caltrain uh, site um, around that station area. So there's some modifications being made to that sign program that are being requested. And so uh, because we have a previously approved sign program for that area, that would need to come forward for the commission to review and consider. So that'll be on the March 7th agenda. Um, and so far, that's the only item we have. It looks like that'll be a light agenda. Um, but then on March 21st, our second meeting in the month of March, we have a pretty full agenda. So there's a lot of things happening um, on March 21st. Um, we will have the housing element annual progress report for the year 2021. So this is where we can share, you know, how many um, building permits were issued for how net new housing uh, units uh, in the city and how close we are um, at meeting ARENA from the fifth cycle, which is our 596 um, unit cycle um, that would go from the year uh, 2015 to 2023. So we will be reporting on that. We also have a use permit uh, request for five, excuse me, 380 Industrial Road um, for a company called Auto Vino. And so this was an interesting business proposal where um, we'll, I guess we'll save the description for the for the meeting, but that will be at 380 Industrial. And then lastly, but not least, is um, the tree protection ordinance. That's on the queue to come to the commission on March 21st. So I will follow up in an email so you have all of these uh, written down. But I just wanted to give you um, a heads up of what's coming up on the agenda for next month. And uh, that's all I have for this evening. Well, thank you very much. And we can adjourn our meeting. Thank you all. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone.